schedule today to uh, chat with us about um, Greenbelt's Teak Plantation Investment in Panama. That's our second venture into Panama, uh, which has proved very successful, a tried and tested formula, which has proved very um, positive returns and delivered very positive returns to those who invested previously and will likely to do at least the same here. Um, my name is Morris Ryan. I work with Greenbelt Limited. We're a private forestry management company. Uh, I'm a director of the business and also a uh, head of business development within Greenbelt. Um, Teak obviously has been around for many centuries and has had many, many uses over the years uh, from shipbuilding to internal and external joinery, house building, construction and so on and so forth often described as the queen of, of tropical timber. Um, it, it, it has been ranked here by a, a guy called Dietrich Brandis, who was um, chief timber buyer for Queen Victoria, I think, uh, as, as similar in, in value and quality um, to diamonds and gold. Some of the most attractive elements to teak is its durability, its strength, but also its quality um, as a timber and its, its beauty as a timber color. Uh, particularly in the heartwood, um, makes it extremely attractive uh, when it's in, in, in each application that it has. We are Greenbelt, um, who are the promoting this investment. Um, Greenbelt are a private forestry management company. We're based out of Ireland. Uh, we're around since 1982 and have established more than 400,000 acres of forestry in Ireland alone for private and institutional uh, landowners. We've operated across uh, the UK into Europe, Eastern Europe, obviously Central America with Panama previously um, and explored options and consulted on projects in uh, South America and even sometimes a little further afield. Um, our Panama project is um, co-managed by uh, the two gentlemen you, you may see on your screen there, Miguel and Hessel um, from Panama Reforestation Services. Um, they have a combined, we won't maybe get into exact numbers, but more than 50 years experience in professional forestry management uh, particularly in, in teak plantations um, all across Central and South America with a particular focus most recently in establishing um, high yielding productive uh, plantations in Panama. Um, we worked with them from our first initiation in Panama in uh, 2005 onwards um, and, and we are absolutely delighted to have them here today uh, as our in-country managers and, and hopefully be able to answer some questions that you may have from on the ground. Um, to date, we have 212 productive hectares established uh, since 2018. Um, it's an 83% productive area. The balance of that is made up of areas preserved uh, for biodiversity. Um, the clones were planted with are an improved clone, which um, produces a much stronger, straighter timber, um, grows much quicker, so it reduces your uh, term length. Uh, and thus the, the, the ultimate return to it. Um, and as I mentioned, our biodiversity element is, is preserved. For 2021, and the reason we're on the call today is we are targeting a raise of 2.5 million uh, euros to acquire further 600 hectares across Panama to cluster uh, and consolidate the areas within the region that you'll see on the screen here, P1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, uh, and the areas in between. Timber prices, or land prices, I should say, are um, attractive for acquisition currently. Um, we've identified some areas that are ready to be purchased. Um, so we're obviously in a position to, to move as quickly as we possibly can on that. Um, and obviously the consolidation enhances our portfolio um, and also particularly from an exit strategy, it enhances it and makes it a lot more attractive to potential purchasers. I have a little short video here just um, showing So that's just a short video um, that, that um, can give you a highlight of some of the areas that have been planted uh, up to now and how well they are performing. I mean, there's nothing there longer than three years of age and there's a significant um, growth in it. The picture you're seeing on your screen now, 
um, that, that's one year old uh, plantation that picture sent um, from our team in Panama mm -hmm. late last year and to show how it's how it's operating. So how this investment is structured is is thus it's um, and it's set up as a limited partnership. So each investor is is uh, an individual limited partner and invests in two different vehicles. Vehicles are obviously limited by the um, amount of land that it can be owned in one vehicle, which is up to 200 hectares. So we can uh, add on an, uh, an infinite number of, of vehicles to this, and they're called um, PT1, PTI, so uh, Panama Teak Investment 1, 2, 3, etc. Um, and they're a limited partnership. And returns are delivered back to the limited partners and the general partner, which is Greenbelt. Um, that's established in Ireland, and it's um, registered with the central bank as an alternative investment fund. Um, in Panama, there is a limited partner or a, a, an entity in Panama is established which acquires the land and the Irish entity makes a business loan to that entity and that's how returns are passed through. We have received tax and legal advice on this from Deloitte in Panama and Ireland. Uh, so it's quite a robust offering from that perspective. We will look to enhance um, the holding from where we are currently at 200 hectares uh, significantly upwards to 2,400 hectares and, and beyond if, if we can raise funds to match that. Um, the return we project is probably a conservative enough 8%, but we, we don't want to overpromise on this, but certainly an 8% is a very achievable rate of return. Um, some of the impacts uh, that, that will influence that return rate are the purchase price of the land, obviously, um, the term length, and then your exit price. A potential exit strategy here, similar to our original um, Panama Teak investment in 2005 and six and seven um, was an exit to uh, Timo, which is a timberland investment manager from the United States, which was in the shape of a pension fund. We exited quite successfully out of that in the region of about 11% per investor. Um, so again, based on the return profile, what we're going to look at here is up to, two thousand, up to 2021, we've, we've um, acquired just over 200 hectares. Um, we're targeting 600 hectares for the next three years and 400, 400 hectares in 2024. At an average pr the price in dollars per hectare of about $5,000. As I say, currently the average price is a little bit less than that. So your return profile is immediately affected positively with that. And we've highlighted here that year in year valuation growth, um, including our after costs, et cetera, um, is in the region of about seven and a half percent. Um, I'll deal with the tax side of things in, in, in a moment. I'm sure people will have questions, um, questions around that. So historically, uh, you'll look at, at timber prices. Obviously, as I say, the exit price, if we did manage this through to year 18, which is a projected uh, clear fill year on this, or each plantation, um, based on the clones and the conditions, um, your timber prices have continually grown and, and would have exceed, would probably exceed the natural timber price um, globally. Obviously, natural timber, natural teak um, forests are becoming more and more protected um, and less of it is available to the market. So obviously that will have an impact on that value. Um, but from plantation uh, teak, which is probably more broadly used in, in lower end um, markets, uh, the timber price has been very, very strong and we would see probably prices in the region of increases over the last uh, 10 years in about 11% per annum. So those of you who aren't familiar with Panama, uh, it's in Central America and um, it's a dollar-based economy. I have circled roughly, very, very roughly where um, some of these plantations are made. It's in an area called the Darien, which is at the end of the Pan American Highway. Uh, Panama is probably most famous for the Panama Canal. Uh, which is which is in Panama City, or obviously it's across the whole country, but you can see it across Panama City. Um, and it's um, uh, Panama obviously is is an extremely well developed country. It's a dollar based economy. It, it, some have referred to it as the fifty first state. I'm not sure how, how much they would like that uh, reference, but that's that's how it's how it's um, discussed. Um, it's got a very very strong infrastructure. Uh, two markets um, for its timber, obviously both from an export perspective, but an internal, an internal logistics side of things too. Um, it's got strong tax inf incentives, which are obviously very important. They welcome foreign direct investment and particularly um, investment into um, plantations and reforestation projects across the, uh, across the country. Um, this isn't a, a Greenbelt only venture. It's been, as I say, well-versed 
you know, companies in, from all across the globe, including Switzerland and Denmark, would have invested heavily into it. And indeed, Harvard University would have invested heavily into it, which uh, Miguel and Hessel would have managed on behalf of as well. I keep referring to how quickly and how strongly and uh, well the Panama will grow, uh, teak will grow um, in our plantations. Again, I mean, this is just another example. You'll see the large, um, the large leaf on, on, on these trees, which obviously improves it from a, a growth perspective. You'll see the undergrowth is, is managed extremely well, very sustainably managed um, from, from our in-country team uh, to, uh, to keep the competition down. You'll see this from uh, one of our plantations, Ricardo, uh, which is the name of the farmer who sold it, in um, 2018, how quickly they're growing. I mean, the tree on the left, well, as I'm looking at it, I assume you're seeing it the same way, is probably eight to 10 metres in height, uh, growing extremely well. Canopy is beginning to close on it, which means that the leaves uh, are closing in on top and getting ready for thinning. You'll see from the larger uh, picture of it, um, of this particular one, where the biodiversity has been um, maintained, which you see in sort of what look, look like sort of more mature trees or hedgerows in throughout it. So that would account for 17% biodiversity, which is protected and maintained across the whole, um, all of our plantations. Here you'll see the 2019 plantation is taken obviously with a drone from a direct aerial view. You'll see the quality of the land, um, which it looks relatively dry, but it's high yielding. Um, and you can see the impact that that is here on the right hand side and a slight slope. Um, the warm tropical climate is, is ideally suited for this. It's, it's moist, it it's, um, has a very, very uh, narrow temperature range from sort of 32, 36 degrees Celsius. It's got a, a, a strong level of rainfall, anywhere from 275 millimeters a month to 500 millimeters a month. Um, depending on the season, but when it's wet, it's very, very wet, but um, it's, it's it, Obviously, then the trees respond extremely well to this and they grow at a phenomenal rate. And to put that into better perspective, we look here at a one year old plantation, which was um, planted there in, in 2020, i.e., last year. And you'll see a person standing beside uh, the tree. So that, that tree, after a year, is over two meters in height. Um, and again, the vegetation, the competing vegetation, has been kept to a minimum, um, which will allow the, the trees to get above that and get, get around to closing canopy. When you get to a point of closing canopy um, and you, you want to enhance the value of the, of the crop and the remaining crop, you look at thinning out the plantation. Um, you'll take out a, a certain percentage based on um, conditions per site, um, based on the quality of the timber and particularly focus on the remaining timber and how you manage that through to its, your to clear fell. Even if the strategy of our investment is not to manage the clear fell, that is our our goal as managers is to manage that and hand it over as a, as a, as a best case scenario to the next uh, the next person who will be managing it through to clear fell. So you take out your your um, floor thinnings, you cut them into three meter lengths. They can be exported either in a cargo ship like this or to mills or to to local markets or indeed to to foreign markets such as the US, etc. End use markets for teak. I alluded to them originally. I mean they they. The, the teak market has been around for forever. You see decking, flooring, um, joint, internal joinery in particular, boats. Um, it's, it's an extremely strong, robust material. Um, beautiful colour. You can see the grading in it and the grain. It's absolutely beautiful. It's, it's great to look at um, and, and, and produced very, very well. It's, it's, you know, and, and the market for it is, is a continually growing market, particularly in developing countries um, where they would be well used to it. I mentioned before the tax structure. So the tax structure in Panama is, is geared towards investment, um, particularly from a forest perspective. They look on it very favorably for returns in terms of income tax, property tax, transferring tax, introduction taxes, and direct financing. But that means for you as investors, um, <clears throat> the limited partners from the foot of the tax exemption, no corporation tax will be paid on profits arising from the sale in Panama. Um, you can read this your own leisure after this and in more detail. There's capital gain currently at a rate of, of 10% or 3% of the cadastral value, plus a 2% immovable property tax, which would be similar to our USC, a universal social charge. Um, there is a double taxation treaty between Ireland and Panama, which means if there is a partnership sale, capital gains will only be paid here in Ireland. 
Um, obviously, with that in mind, the um, currency transfer rate would be uh, extremely important here, the currency exchange rate here. So we can actually, uh, we've taken advice on this previously because we've never purport to be experts in that. But on our last exit, um, we, had, we took advice on opportune times to transfer the money from Panama to Ireland to take advantage of, of more favorable rates. Um, once the proceeds have been received, the profits, net profits, will be distrib distributed to the limited partners and general partner. And those, those fees and profits, well, so, sorry, those profits would be net of all fees, as were the, the numbers that I suggested earlier on, that 7.5% were all net of any costs and fees that, are, that could be incurred. With any investment, obviously, there is risk. Um, I mentioned the currency side of things, and that is one element to, uh, to bear in mind. Um, you do have a certain level of, of luxury insofar as that you can leave the money in Panama until the currency is, is more in your favor. Obviously, from a growth and a forestry perspective, the three main risks are fire, pestilence, and wind. Um, teak is relatively resistant to, um, to fire. Um, the, the, most regular occurrence of fires will be due to lightning strikes, um, but they're extremely isolated, so you wouldn't lose, you tend not to lose larger blocks of forestry. Um, pestilence obviously can occur. Um, it does tend to occur more in natural teak forests as opposed to plantation forests such as this, but it's obviously it's not completely immune to it. And of course, our, our old friend, the wind. Um, the biggest risk to this, uh, at, at this point for this condition is um, the, um, it is post thinning. Um, when you've opened up the forest and it's a little bit more exposed um, than, it, than, than it had been previously. And this is where the skill and expertise of, of Greenbelt and our in-country managers um, come into play here that we, we don't thin too late, uh, we don't over thin the plantation, we manage it um, against prevailing winds. As with all of those risks, our sustainable, sustainable uh, forestry management practices will help mitigate against these risks. Can't eradicate them entirely, but it will help to mitigate against them. That is everything I would like to say at the moment. Um, we're here for as long as you would like to be here for. Um, Miguel and Hessel will answer any questions you might have on it, as will I. Uh, and of course, we're open for conversation afterwards. My details are above or here in the screen in front of you. So my mobile and my email address, and of course our website there with, with a direct link to the panel side of things. But um, please do pass on any questions you might have. If you want to put them here in the Q&A or in the chat section. Maurice. Yes. Maybe we should uh, talk to them a little bit about our uh, experience with Peak in Panama since you and since Greenbelt and uh, Panama Reforestation Services met. Perfect. So in 2005, Mossy Ryan uh, came to Panama looking for a teak plantation to, to buy. And actually, it was the first farm we bought. And so I'm kind of Irish because my last name is. Bayarino, but also from my mom's side, Cox. So I am Irish. Uh, so we got along very well. And we started this project using uh, seeds from Costa Rican plantations that Hessel managed from very good quality seeds. Since then, we've been um, using clones. We cloned uh, a few thousand Costa Rican uh, trees and uh, we from them chose 11, which were the best. And then we moved to Malaysian clones, which are the ones we've been planting since the last three, four years. The difference uh, from those clones is that one, uh, they grow better, they grow straighter, so you need to plant less. So you're, you, and since they grow faster, your cost of maintenance goes down and um, your trees are probably 20% bigger in the first year and they keep that rate all, all the way through the ages we have now, which are the oldest ones we have from Malaysia are four years old, and they are 20% bigger than the Costa Rican clones and more than the seeds. So we we have we have very high expectations. Um, it's you know one of the I think the most important things we we've, we've seen with uh, managing plantations is that uh, opening up the space is key because thinning are 
really not a return uh, to the investor. They basically help a little bit of the management to cover costs. But if you can save costs without planting so many and having them grow faster, then you do less thinnings, which cost a lot of money and put everybody at a lot of uh, pressure, all the team and equipment, team, everybody is under pressure for a long time. So now we're, we're more uh, driven to, to lower density. We started planting uh, 700 trees, 711 trees per hectare. Now we're planting in the better sites, 400 with the Malaysian groups. And uh, so that is, you know, the future is big trees. That's what the value is. The peak, tree, the peak prices are based on girth. Uh, the smaller the, the, the girth, the smaller the, the, the lower the price, and the bigger the girth, uh, the, the, the better price. For example, uh, we just harvest this year a 16 year old plantation, and from the point of the tree, which is like 40 to 50 centimeters, you get $140 per cubic meter hopus, and for the bigger uh, log, the first log, you get $400 per cubic meter. So our challenge is making the trees grow big and valuable. And, and this has been an uh, interesting learning curve for us. I think and we are you know, one of the most innovative groups. We, we manage 7,000 hectares planted of 10,000 hectares in Darien and 2,500 or oh, 7,000 in Torreira, which is where the canal is, uh, it's a concession. I think maybe you have to have something to say also. Well, no, I, I agree. Uh, with everything you have said so far, uh, Mauricio, had a, I hope you recorded it. It was a perfect uh, wrap up of the whole situation. Uh, there are some other things that come always in the picture. I, I think timing is important because at this moment, there is a, a, a COVID crisis. Uh, for example, cattle prices are relatively low, pushing land prices down. So land is now more affordable than it was like three years ago. The other reason that land is now a good buy is that the land prices were under a lot of pressure because there was a lot of large timber, timos, timber investment management organizations from the US investing in deep plantations in Panama. They basically followed us uh, after that. And that put a lot of pressure on land prices that went up a lot. But they are now, they have stopped during the crisis. They don't buy anymore. They have their scale. They have everything they want to have. So there's not many people buying at this moment. So that is the point I want to add to the equation, to the story. Uh, that land is, is at this moment, I think, uh, uh, affordable and uh, uh, relatively uh, cheap. In other words, we better hurry up. I guess. Thanks, guys. I got a couple of questions in here. Um, Rory asked about uh, tax liabilities in Ireland. Are they subject to full income tax, USC and PRSI? It would be uh, the, the dividends returns would be open to capital gains tax um, on that because of the the, uh, the the treaty in the double treaty. It, it will depend on, on when it exits. If um, but you're likely to pay capital gains tax on on the positives or the on the uplift in it. Um, and USC, obviously, and PRSI, I think, will, will be additional to that. Um, going up here, and uh, asked, uh, from a pension or personal finance, the taxation treated the same and the projected returns percentage net of gross or net of gross. The return, projected returns are net, net of all costs. Um, and from a pension or personal finance, it depends on how you're structured. The dividend will come back to limited partnerships um, and how you exit that, that limited partnership is... Um, will be based, and I don't want to give a loose answer here, but it will be based on your, your own personal circumstance and your tax and how it was structured and how the structure of your pension fund will be if you've a self-administered pension fund and they include forestry within it. Um, <clears throat> it'll, be, it'll be treated a bit more favourably on that. Uh, Miles Robin is, is on the call and he's, he's, um, he's helped us with, with some of our tax things on this before. Um, uh, but we, we can we can explore that in more detail on, a, on an individual basis. Um, there was another question here. The Lawrence asked about the plantations affecting the local economy and environment, and it's a good question. It's something we're very very conscious of, and the lads alluded to it there that with cattle prices being low and land prices coming down as a, as a reflection of that, 
and we've seen something similar in Ireland when when agricultural practices are are struggling. Um, people leave the country and move to urban areas, so they leave rural areas and go to it. However, with plantations like this and the the additional employment that can be generated from it, from the planting and management, harvesting of timber, the transport of timber, um, whether a, a hotel or, or, or guest houses or shops, whatever, to service the people who are working and living down there can open up, you, you start to see a bit of life back into, into communities and, and uh, wouldn't have been there previously. Obviously, we have our, our, our in-country teams subcontract and contract uh, workers locally, um, and we try and maintain good long-term relations with these guys so they can they can continue to do and, and complete all the work on this uh, on these sites throughout. And obviously, the availability of, of labour is very very important to make sure all of this is um, all our targets are hit. And that uh, brings me to Ken's question. What, what performance measuring reporting is planned? What we've done to date is we have we have um, inventory plots um, throughout each of the plantations, uh, and at the same points are, are measured annually to see growth rates and, and to measure the, the performance of, of the plantation. Um, we value it on an annual basis. Um, where we are, um, as I say, registered as an alternative investment fund, so we're obliged to to have it. We have uh, auditors and audit accounts. Um, for the last year are, are being issued later today, actually, as, as luck would have it. Um, so it's, um, I mean, everything that we try and do, everything we do is trying to be as transparent as possibly can in terms of our management activities from our panel reforestation services partners that they um, explain everything they do in an itemized um, fee structure and, and, and structure in terms of per hectare and per plantation of what's, what is carried out. So we try and have it as, as open and transparent as we possibly can and give as much detail to the investors because obviously with it being far away and difficult to visit, um, it's important that we have everybody on board and uh, in a, in a, as trust, um, trustworthy as we can, we can manage it, you know. So if anybody fancies a trip to Panama uh, over the next few months, this is, this is your opportunity. You, you can put it down to work and investment. Yeah, COVID here is very low. Good. So well, we have to quarantine for two weeks. <laughs> no, 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 not here. Not I, think people, I think people here on, the, on this chat may actually like to quarantine in Panama for two weeks. <laughs> I know, I wouldn't mind it too much. Um, get a bit of sun on my back, you know, when I can finally get my hair cut. Um, but yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's my eyebrows need cutting more than my hair. Um, listen, does anyone else have anything else they would like to to answer? I know. Listen, the the tax question is is always the answers can be a little bit sort of broad and vague, but we'll happily work through it with you and we can try and get a bit of advice on it and. Whoever your your tax can share any of the tax information we have with you, um, and obviously then we can. If you have a tax consultant, we, we would always recommend you speak to them. Uh, they are professionals in this. We nobody grows trees better than us, but um, there are people who know tax better than us. Okay. But I think I think that's everything. Um, and again, I just want to thank everybody for taking time out of their schedule to to join in today and to interact and ask some questions. Um, you have my contact details, so please do get in touch. Um, pass on anything you like. This uh, session has been recorded, uh, and it's available for anybody who would like to have it and, and, and go back over mm -hmm. any items. Um, as I said, we can go through it individually with anybody. I'd also like to thank uh, Miguel and Hessel for um, getting up and. Uh, it's, it's 8.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning in, in Panama now. Um, um, so it's uh, on, a, on a Friday morning, but they're smiling, so that's a good start. So they've obviously had their morning mm -hmm. coffee. Um, so listen, thank you very much for everybody, and um, we'll be in touch very soon. Thanks, Miguel. Thanks, Hessel. Bye-bye. Sure, thanks. A pleasure.